For one of the three crossovers, I would pick Soul Calibur. I think it'd be a fun universe to cross over with Newfound Divinity. Hell, I've also wanted to do a fighting game with the Newfound Divinity characters, so there's that as well. And then I think it'd be fun to kind of work out how would the characters from Newfound Divinity interact with the Soul Edge and Soul Calibur. Hell, I'd love to see conversations between Sven and Zosalamel. They're both cursed with immortality, so it, it would just be fun to kind of sit down and work out what the two would talk about. And honestly, hell, I'd be honored if Lieutenant Will was a guest character in Soul Calibur, of all characters from New Fountain Divinity. Another one I would go with would be Warriors Orochi. I love the Koei's Warriors series. Love the gameplay. I think it'd be fun watching characters from Newfound Divinity just go across the battlefield as a one-man army. I've always loved that gameplay. And it'd be interesting to see how characters would interact with some of the mythological characters in Warriors Orochi, especially now that they're adding some Western mythology, but especially Zaron, since he had dealings with a similar god named Orochi, who also exists in, well, Warriors Orochi. So it'd be kind of fun to work out how would they interact. Would Zaron have a great hatred for the Orochi from this universe? Would he, you know, fall back in line with Orochi? It's a, I'm not even sure. That would just be fun to work out. And I guess for a third crossover game, Final Fantasy. I took a lot of inspiration from the classic Final Fantasies while making Newfound Divinity. I think it'd be fun to cross over the two, kind of a little brother hanging out with big brother sort of, kind of, I guess, tribute for lack of a better word. And, I mean, most things that cross over with Final Fantasy, like Disney, they made Kingdom Hearts, so why the hell not? So those would be the three I would pick. Soul Calibur, Warriors Orochi, and Final Fantasy. I would go with DJ Hypergiant. Um, I love his work. He's a great guy. I've actually met him. Amazing stuff, and... Actually, for my next project, I'm hoping to work much closer with him. Heck, I might see about getting a re-release where he does the entire soundtrack for Newfound Divinity. But um, some other names that come to mind. The legendary Grant Kirkhope, of course. If you don't know him, go, go find out. He, <laughs> you should know Grant Kirkhope. Did the music for Banjo Kazooie and GoldenEye N64. That says it right there, that's all you need to know. Um, another one, Jeremy Soule. I loved his work on Morrowind and Knights of the Old Republic. I mean, sure, he might not be John Williams, but he captured the just the feel of the Star Wars universe and put his own spin on it. I I love the KOTOR soundtrack. I, I would love for him to make the music. And then some other names. Nobuo Uematsu and Koji Kondo. Obvious reasons, you know. Nobuo Uematsu did Final Fantasy and Koji Kondo does a lot of the music for Nintendo, so pretty self-explanatory there. A 
the meat and pretty much think about what if the cat never saved K at the beginning of the game. K would just die in their sleep while the house is on fire. The end. So of course the cat is, you know, the major hero of newfound divinity. There's, there's just no question. It, the cat's the hero. I have at least one DLC planned, aside from that one I mentioned earlier, where the entire soundtrack is redone by DJ Hypergiants, if we ever get to that, but this other DLC is called the Pay to Win DLC, because it's essentially that. Gives you a few pieces of equipment that are better than anything else in the game to help you just breeze right through it. Includes two new class options, the Favored Soul, which is significantly stronger than the other classes available to K. And the Noob class, which doesn't really have that many abilities, just in case you want some extra difficulty. It also includes three party members. Siegfried, the Elf Paladin. Will, the Human Soldier. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the deal with the makers of Shovel Knight. So the third party member is actually very unrelated. Digging Warrior. Excavation Extraordinaire. No. You. No, honestly, I didn't expect Brynhilda to be the best girl when I made her. If anything, based on the feedback I was getting, I was expecting Flynn Shaw when I released their initial designs, I got overwhelmingly positive feedback on her. Of course, I tried to make every girl in their own right at least arguable for best girl. Of course, at the end of the day, everyone has their own opinion, so there is that. Though, I, now I get about the same amount of people saying Flinshaw is the best girl as there are Brynhilda being the best girl. Sorry, Misaki. I, I let you down. I know in a follow-up message you sent this question more trying to gauge who the face of Newfound Divinity was. And of course the face would be K or the cat. But I would not want them on death battle for some reasons that you'll find out end game. I just don't think they would be good for death battle again. Those reasons are massive spoilers, so I'm sorry I can't say more. You'll unfortunately just have to wait till Newfound Divinity is fully released, and then you'll probably more understand why I don't want them on Death Battle. But if I were to pick one person to be on Death Battle, I would want Kozon. He's just got the least abstract of abilities, so it'd be very easy to quantify and get him an opponent. And I think it'd be fun to animate him since he's a martial artist. If I could pick an opponent for him, Knuckles, the Echidna, or maybe Gene from God Hand. Ooh.